Quick heads up, this is going to have a bit of repeat content from the last video. Just skip ahead to the parts that you want to hear. Welcome to part two of the storage overview for the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. Today's topic is M2 hosts and MVME. Unlike my first video on SSDs, this video will pertain to both the 2019 Mac Pros and the classic Mac Pros, years 2008 through 2012. If you're unsure of which model of Mac you have, you can always check it in About This Mac located under the Apple menu. This video will not cover the 2013 Mac Pros as they have their own special considerations. I do plan to do a video on that in the future, so unfortunately, you'll just have to wait for it. Or alternatively, you can visit the 2013 Trash Can Mac Pro Upgrade Guide. It contains all the information you need to upgrade your 2013 Mac Pro, just not in video format, including SSDs. Links to it and the definitive Mac Pro Upgrade Guide are both located in the video's description. Selecting an NVMe drive for your Mac Pro is pretty easy, as there's really only two SSDs that I am aware of that are Mac Pro incompatible. That's the Samsung 950 Pro and the Samsung PM981. The only other SSD that I'm aware of that did not work quite right with the Mac Pros is the 970 EVO Plus by Samsung. This is a very fast and popular drive, and fortunately it's only a firmware update away from working. If you happen to purchase one today, it should work right out the box. Mine did. If it doesn't, you can update it. So, problem solved. As I previously stated, not all SSDs are created equal. I suggest doing the due diligence before buying an SSD, such as searching for reviews or using comparison websites like userbenchmark.com. It's really time to let you guys on a big secret that I've been holding on to. And I kind of debated telling you, but why not? We're here. So, I recommend doing the following whenever you find a new piece of hardware. If you search Mac rumors plus any piece of hardware, you're bound to get some great results. This won't be the only time I suggest this in one of my videos. It's not perfect, it's not foolproof, and you're bound to be searching through some pretty nebulous forum topics and posts. But there's a good chance if you're considering a piece of hardware, someone else has asked that same question and someone else provided an answer. The M2 standard, formerly known as the NGFF Next Generation Form Factor, is built specifically to interface with 4x PCIe lanes. PCIe lane speeds are determined by the generation of PCIe. Each generation of PCIe effectively doubles the bandwidth of a single lane. For comparison, a 2019 Mac Pro's 4x slot has a theoretical bandwidth of 4,000 megabytes per second. The same slot found in a 2008 through 2012 Mac Pro will have a theoretical maximum of 2,000 megabytes per second. When this translates to real-world performance, a 2019 Mac Pro can achieve about 3,000 megabytes per second on a 4x slot. A 2008 through 2012 Mac Pro will achieve about 1,500 megabytes per second. In my previous video, I mentioned that M2 slots do not equal NVMe and the point still stands, but I'm not going to talk about anything other than NVMe SSDs. The older Mac Pros are definitely at a disadvantage for NVMe because they only have four PCIe slots and they have a slower PCIe bus. The 2019 Mac Pro has eight PCIe slots and a much faster PCIe bus. Almost all NVMe drives can achieve more than 1500 megabytes per second. And since M2 host cards are based on the 4X standard, even if you stick one of those cards into a 16X PCIe slot, you won't be able to address more than 4X PCIe lanes. That means in the older Mac Pros, you'll never get more than 1500 megabytes per second using a standard M2 host card. Fortunately, any multi-drive M2 host card that is compatible with the Mac Pro will increase performance in both single drive and multi-drive setups. This is because they address more than 4x PCIe lanes at once. In the storage overview video, I mentioned that the Mac Pro 1.1 aka the 2006 cannot boot NVMe. This is still true for Mac OS, but readers pointed out you can boot Windows 10 off of NVMe. This requires installing a master boot record on a SATA drive, then pointing the Windows install to the NVMe drive. The 2006 Mac Pros unfortunately are PCI 1.0, so really mitigates the benefits of doing this. 
Also working against the Mac Pro 1.1 is it only has one 16x slot. An NVMe drive in one of the 4x slots would be capped to roughly about 750 megabytes per second. The main benefit of sticking an NVMe drive in one of these older systems wouldn't be for the maximum throughput, but for the random read-write times that NVMe offers and the lower latency. While on the topic of corrections, Petrie Crone posted instructions on how to boot NVMe on the Mac Pro 3.1 without modifying the firmware. This requires using the REFIND Boot Manager, aka Refind, then installing an NVMe EFI driver into the EFI along with an APFS EFI driver. This would be much more desirable than modifying your firmware. When I confirm more about this procedure, I'll update the description of this video and the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. For NVMe support on the Mac Pro 4.1s, you'll need to upgrade your firmware to the 5.1s firmware. And 5.1 users should make sure they're running the latest firmware offered for the Mac Pro 5.1. You can read about this and more in the firmware section of the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. Also, none of the Mac Pros support bifurcation. Bifurcation allows a single PCIe slot to be divided up. It's very common for PCs to use a single 8x slot to address two NVMe drives, or a 16x slot to address four NVMe drives. Unfortunately, it's just not the case on the Mac Pros. It's kind of heartbreaking to see how many cheap M2 host cards there are for the PCs that just won't work with multiple drives for the Mac Pros. Fortunately, there is a solution for the Mac Pros, and that are controller cards that have specialized chipsets to address multiple PCIe lanes. There's not many to choose from. They don't come cheap, but they unlock better performance for the classic Mac Pros. They are almost exclusively based off a single chipset made by AS Media, known as the ASM2824. Almost every M2 host that uses this chipset works in a Mac Pro. Some of these cards are 8x PCIe, and some are 16x PCIe. This does matter as it'll determine the maximum throughput of the card. The list of compatible M2 host cards on the definitive Mac Pro upgrade is not complete by any stretch. There are plenty of cards that I might not be aware of that do work in the Mac Pro. This is especially true when talking about single drive M2 host cards. Most generic cards are compatible with the Mac Pro. The list found on the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide is just a list of confirmed working cards. These are just cards that I and the community at large consider safe bets for the Mac Pro. I'll go over the list of these cards later in this video. So before I get to that, I'd like to talk about one last topic and that's the topic of cooling on SSDs. NVMe drives run hot. This is part of the technology and it's to be expected. The part that especially gets hot is the controller chipset, which is located at the base of an NVMe drive. There's a big, messy, ugly debate on the internet right now whether you should cool your NVMe drives. In the description of this video, there's links to other resources on this debate. The closest consensus right now is running an NVMe drive without a heatsink will not hurt it. NVMe drives are intelligent enough to thermally throttle themselves if they get too hot. Most users won't put the kind of stress on an NVMe where thermal throttling will kick in. That said, if you're looking for the absolute maximum performance, you should probably get a heatsink for your NVMe. These can be bought with the card or aftermarket. Other testers have revealed that even cheap heatsinks seem to do the job just fine. The NVMe cards that generally have active cooling, aka a fan, are ones that have an ASM controller chipset as those get quite hot. Otherwise, a fan is completely unnecessary. Now let's run down all the available options for the Mac Pro currently. In this section, you should notice that each card lists the maximum speed for both the classic Mac Pros and the 2019 Mac Pro. Many of these cards are white label that exist under a number of names from various importers. The speeds in this section are expressed as real-world performance estimates. First, we have the generic NGFF M-Key M2 card. This is a cheap budget card found on AliExpress, and I mean cheap. This is like $3 USD cheap. It works great and does everything it needs to do. It just doesn't have a heatsink. After that's the Lycom DT120 M2. This is another budget option that's also available under a lot of names. Next is the Ulensen to M2 PCIe. Be sure to get this one in the 4X version, not the 16X version. 
The Angel Bird PX1 represents a higher end option, although not higher speed. It costs more and it's out of production now. The Aqua Computer Cairo M2 represents one of the more popular options because it comes with a heatsink. This is the same card you saw earlier in this video. The Cairo M2 Evo is the same card as the Cairo, but it has LED lights and a higher cost. The Wolf Tech Pulse card is a higher end option with a higher price tag. The increased cost does not improve the speed. The Cyber IOCRESS SIPEX 40129 was a popular ASM2824 chipset based card and it's available under a bunch of different names. However, users have experienced this self-included that this card no longer seems to be working with the Mac Pros. If you can track down a known working version of this card, use it, otherwise I'd skip it. The Ablecom PX M2130, StarTech PX82 M2 E2, or Lycom DT130 has multiple importers of this particular card. Thus far, every version of this card seems to work just fine in the Mac Pros. It's generally one of the cheapest multi-drive cards for the Mac Pros. The OWC Excelsior 42M is a card that's designed more for the 2019 Mac Pros than the classics. The 2019 Mac Pros have multiple 8x slots. On a classic Mac Pro, you will want to get a 16x card to get the maximum performance as it's devoid of 8x slots. Not every one of the Amphiltech Squid series is compatible with the Mac Pro, but on their website, the Squid series clearly knows which cards are not compatible with computers that do not support bifurcation. Since these are specialty cards that are hard to come by, I'm not going to list every single model. For a long time, the High Point 7101A represented the pinnacle of Mac Pro M2 hosts. This is because it's one of the first ASM2824 cards to hit the market, and it has four slots and a 16X. There's a few more options today, but still a monster. The longtime Mac specialist Sonnet has two entries in the 4X by 4 series. This is the first version and it has active cooling. It's no longer produced and it's a beast. Since then, Sonnet's replaced it with a silent version. What's not the love here? Same great performance, but now quieter. So if you made it this far and you're not asleep, you're probably wondering which M2 host card you should buy. For the classic Mac Pros, I highly recommend getting any of the cards that can read multiple NVMe drives because they unlock better performance for any single drive or RAID or whatever configuration you're using. After that, for the classic Mac Pro owners, it's a question if you need two or four drives. If you do, go with the High Point or the Sonnet. The 2019 Mac Pros are a different story altogether. That's because they have the PCI 3.0 bus, which is much faster. Even buying the cheapest of the NVMe hosts listed in this video will work great. The main motivation for purchasing a multi-drive card for the 2019 Mac Pro is to save PCIe slots and to get the best RAID performance possible. If you just noticed, for the first time in these two videos on NVMe, I just mentioned RAID for the first time. For the sake of time, I'm going to assume you know what RAID is, but if you don't, the shortest way to explain it is you can chain multiple drives together in a number of configuration options for backup or performance. In my first video, I kind of dodged this subject, and that's because APFS, aka Apple File System, does not play very nicely with RAID. You can create RAID arrays, use them as scratch disks, but they're not bootable. That said, there are hacks to get bootable APFS RAID arrays. Unsurprisingly, they're pretty ugly. Who knows, Apple might actually modify Apple file system to allow for bootable RAID arrays. Maybe one day in the future I'll do a video on how to do this, but for now, check the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide for details. The summary of this video is not much different than my storage video. Most single drive M2 host cards work with the Mac Pro. To use multiple NVMe drives on a single M2 host card, you'll need to get a specialized card that has a controller chipset that interfaces with the PCIe bus. This is true for both the 2019 Mac Pro and the classic Mac Pros. When buying a multi-drive NVMe M2 host card, classic Mac Pro owners should buy a 16X card. This is because the classic Mac Pros do not have any 8X slots. Also, a single NVMe drive can fully saturate a 8X PCI 2.0 card. 
Since the 2019 Mac Pro has no shortage of PCIe slots, users can select between 8X or 16X cards. The only scenarios where a 16X card really comes into play are when using RAID arrays that span all four drives or using a specialized workflow that would saturate more than two NVMe drives at once. Lastly, I highly recommend checking out the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. It will have the most up-to-date information on this topic and plenty others. Hey, thanks for watching Definitive Mac Pro Upgrade Guide. I hope to see you guys again.